It's time to learn about absolute extrema. In the last video, we talked about local extrema and how we could find them by looking for points at which the derivative of the function is zero and looking then at the sign of the derivative just to either side of those points. We also noted that we don't actually need the function to be differentiable at all points, which we can see with this graph. If we look at the intervals on which the function is differentiable, we can still look at the sign of the derivative to tell us whether there's a local max or min. Now we're going to talk about absolute extrema, which means that we actually do care that the values are the largest or smallest that the function achieves anywhere on its domain. An absolute maximum of a function f is the value of f at a point x equals a such that f of x is less than or equal to f of a for every x in the domain of f. Note that we no longer restrict our attention to a small interval around a. We need to consider how f behaves on its entire domain. Likewise, this is the definition of an absolute minimum. We need here for f of a to be no greater than f of x for every x in the domain of f. Let's look at an example. This function has an absolute maximum at this peak and an absolute minimum here. It's not a problem that the absolute minimum is achieved in two places. It's still the smallest value that f achieves, and that's what really matters. But what if we look at the graph of a cubic polynomial instead, or a quadratic? The cubic has a local max and min, but neither is absolute. The quadratic has an absolute minimum, but no absolute maximum. In fact, it doesn't even have the local maximum. I should say here that we're considering these graphs on the entire real line, so they keep going in the indicated directions. It's worth noting here that an absolute maximum or minimum is also a local maximum or minimum, respectively. Worse than either of these is this graph, which not only has no absolute extrema, but has infinitely many local extrema. If you tried looking for absolute extrema at the places where there's a horizontal tangent line, you'd be quickly frustrated if you didn't see a pattern. The point is that finding absolute extrema can be very hard. There's a special case, though, where things tend to be easier, and that's when you're dealing with a function restricted to a closed and bounded interval. Now we can see that there's both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. In fact, this is always true as long as f is continuous. If f is a continuous function on the closed interval AB, then f has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on AB. We can no longer only look for places where the derivative is zero or doesn't exist, though, since we might also have a max or min at one of the endpoints of the interval. Here, for example, the absolute maximum occurs where there's a horizontal tangent line, but the absolute minimum occurs at an endpoint. So we have an additional thing to note, namely that the absolute extrema occur at x values at which f prime is zero or does not exist, and these points are called critical points of f, or at the endpoints of the interval AB.